Today's conversation is with Spiros Santos. Spiros is a serial entrepreneur who's achieved two successful exits to Splunk and VMware. Now, he and his co-founder, Mayank Agarwal, are on a mission to rethink software engineering tools for an AI-first world with their new company, Resolve AI. In our conversation, Spiro shares the status of productivity gains from AI and software engineering, how Resolve was born after realizing he spent 15 years in infrastructure and observability software just creating more work for humans, why customers have been quick to adopt Resolve's agents, and how he's been able to compete with places like Meta, OpenAI, and Anthropic for talent. Let's dive in. Spiros, I'm really excited to chat with you today. Uh, I think we initially met in October of 2023. Uh, you, you had just left Splunk and we're thinking about what to do next and we're beginning to envision sort of what's now become Resolve. And we at Greylock are really fortunate to have gotten the chance to back you with one of the largest seed rounds uh, we've ever led um, a, a little over a year ago now. And a lot of good things have happened since then, a lot to talk about today. So before we double click on that and, and on what you're building at Resolve, everyone's talking about just the impact AI is having on software engineering. Like, where are we with AI and software engineering? Models have solved coding, they haven't solved software engineering. Because it's not sufficient to solve the coding or feature velocity problem, we have to figure out how to go much faster in production as well. And actually, a lot of the data that is involved in production systems it's data that uh, models have not been trained with. And then you have all the tribal knowledge that is barely documented. So to solve this problem, you need to build a lot more technology mm -hmm. on top of the models. How hard is it to build AI to actually make production go faster? It's a very hard problem because first of all, you're dealing with production systems where reliability is very, very important, right? Yeah. You cannot make mistakes and you cannot make something worse. Second, you're trying to make uh, Oftentimes, an agent to execute a production flow, for example, take an alert and give you the root cause, right? Or take an incident and figure out what caused it. It has to probably make tens, sometimes hundreds, maybe even thousands of tool calls, right? And there is also multi-agent orchestration, right? Because you probably have a different agent that understands code, a different agent that understands logs, and maybe a different agent that kind of runs in the background at all times to figure out tribal knowledge. And you have to combine all that information in real time yeah. and getting to an outcome. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about your experience pre-Resolve? Because I think it's an important sort of context that relates to how Resolve came to be. For the past 15 years, I've been solving the wrong problem almost. Uh, you know, I built multiple generations of observability tools, created open, open telemetry, but you know, all these efforts and products resulted in more data, more work actually for humans rather than answers. Also, when I was at Splunk, I was in charge of a large engineering team and the vast majority of our time was spent in maintaining and troubleshooting our production system rather than building it. There was a period of time where over six months we lost 90% of our SREs because of burnout, because of how hard it was to actually maintain and troubleshoot the system. Our kind of thesis was that AI should be able to do this a lot better. Mm -hmm. Someone at the Resolve team sent me a gong call recently uh, and it was with a large public company CTO who had just seen the Resolve demo and he said something like, uh, you know, the value he can get from Resolve is actually larger than from coding agents because it can actually replace swaths of work that, that his team is doing. Like, how does the Resolve agent work today? We built Resolve primarily as an AI site reliability engineer, uh, a set of agents that can help you troubleshoot alerts and incidents. But what happened is when you build this agentic system that can use human tools and can understand production all the way from code to backend databases and everything in between, you end up with this very powerful tool that is a lot faster. And so talk a little bit about what you're seeing in terms of customer uptake. We see very large enterprises, enterprises that I didn't expect actually to be adopting AI in production, already using our product in production with great success. A lot of our customers now are vibe debugging using Resolve, which uh, means they use it outside of incidents and alerts all the time. And th that's causing actually our, our, uh, the product usage to explode. And so maybe the other side of that question is like, why do customers need Resolve? Why can't they solve these use cases with tools like Cursor or Cloud Code? When you're dealing with end-to-end -end software in engineering, it's not sufficient to just understand code. You have to understand equally well all these other parts of the production system, all the tools that people use, and to be able to extract really from all these tools, from documents and people's minds, all that knowledge that is unique to every company and you need it to be able to run your operation. 
Uh, it's, a, it's a very different and a much more complex problem, honestly. So it's a complex problem. You've had to build a pretty sophisticated engineering and AI team. So you often ask me to speak to candidates who are considering joining Resolve. And you know, I'll, I'll tell you the classic call I've been getting on recently with researchers and AI engineers. Hey, I'm considering four companies, uh, Meta, OpenAI, Anthropic, and Resolve. How are you convincing kind of these leading AI engineers to join Resolve versus one of the large labs? We're able to recruit some pretty amazing research engineers. Yeah. And I think the reason is, actually, some of these folks never worked in uh, B2B and enterprise before, yeah. which is also very surprising. I think the reason is that for the first time, we see that in uh, enterprise, we, in the medium term at least, we have an opportunity to replace huge amounts of work yeah. and actually completely change how software engineering is done. I would say the other reason is that uh, if you go to a lab, if you're a top researcher and you go to a lab these days, you can have very interesting work and you have reasonable impact, but really your own efforts sometimes won't make or break uh, or won't change the outcome. If some of the joints resolve or a commonly like resolve, they can truly uh, you know, make or break the company almost. I would actually argue that what you, you're building at Resolve has become one of the two or three ubiquitous use cases for AI. So if you look forward now, what's in the future of sort of agentic production engineering? I think humans are gonna start operating at a higher level of abstraction, and a lot of the work is gonna be done by agents. And when that happens, I also think all the, all the underlying infrastructure and tools work is going to change as well to be much more appropriate for agents. Yeah, absolutely. Spiros, thanks for joining us today. Uh, what a great discussion about Resolve, and we're just getting started. I'm so excited for what's ahead. Thank you so much for having me, and thanks for all the partnerships so far, Sam. It's been a great working with you. Mm -hmm.